Hey guys, today I'm going to show you step by step how to assemble an Ultraprop propeller. I'm going to build a three blade 38 inch Ultraprop 1 that we commonly use in the direct drive application on a lot of our small engines. But before we get started, I want to take a really fast safety moment and remind you to please never run a propeller without a proper safety guard in place. It's not worth the risk even for a moment. So please be smart, be safe, and with that, let's dive right in. So these are the components that come in an Ultraprop kit. We've got the blades, the hub, which comes in two halves, the pitch blocks, and hardware. So a couple things to check before you jump in and start doing the assembly. First, take a quick look at all the pitch blocks and make sure you have all the same pitch. It's gonna be hard to see here, but the pitch is actually molded into the pitch blocks at this location here. It's usually best if you have a bright light to look at it, and that'll be a number between eight and 18 and that's the number of degrees the propeller will be set at. So make sure you have matching pitches. These are all 13s for this demo. And then the second thing is to familiarize yourself with the blade itself. This is an Ultraprop 1 blade, and we want to identify the top and bottom or the downwind side of the blade. So on the Ultraprop 1, the flat part, the flat side, is the bottom or downwind side of the blade. What this means is standing downwind from the propeller when it's running, you'll be able to see the flat sides of the blades. So be really careful here. Make sure you don't get these installed backwards. And if you do happen to have an Ultraprop 2, they're similar but have a different blade shape. These do have a flatter side and a more rounded side. If you look at it from the end, it looks sort of like the picture you might have seen of an airplane wing in a textbook. So it's mostly flat on the bottom or the downwind side, with a rounded top. That's how you identify the bottom or the downwind side of an Ultraprop 2 blade. Okay, now that that's done, we're gonna start with one half of the hub. It doesn't matter which half, they're all identical. So we're gonna take one of the halves and put two bolts for each blade with a washer underneath the head into each of the outer holes. When that's done, we'll carefully turn it over so the bolts are facing up without letting them fall back out. So next is the most important part of the assembly. These propellers come in both left-hand and right-hand versions to accommodate engines that spin clockwise or counterclockwise. Most of the ones that we work with are left-hand propellers because most of the industrial V-twin engines, like the Hondas, the Briggs, Predators, and Kohlers, and so on, they all turn counterclockwise when viewed from the PTO shaft side of the engine. So to do that, take your first pitch block and orient it like it is in the instructions as well, but like this, it's a little bit tight sometimes. Okay, now look very closely for a left-hand propeller, just like in the instructions, the slope of this pitch block is gonna be going up and to the left. If you have a right-hand propeller, it's gonna be going up and to the right. So for left-hand props, make it look just like this. Now do the other two pitch blocks in the empty slots the exact same way. Okay, and that's that half assembled. So do a quick double check, make sure all the pitch blocks are oriented the same way. Look at each of the roots head on, up and to the left, up and to the left, without the bolts falling out preferably, up and to the left for a left hand prop. So now we're ready to proceed. So next, we wanna take each of the blades and we usually do the flat side up it's important to be consistent here. Slide it down over each set of bolts. So flat side up, second blade, flat side up, third blade, flat side up. And now the remaining pitch blocks only go on one way. Now these sometimes can be a little bit 
tighter. Okay, so now the three blades and all of the pitch blocks are installed. All that remains is the second half of the hub. This one, it's best to be slow and careful. Get all the bolts lined up as best you can. At this point, it's designed to be a pretty tight fit. Gradually go around. Sometimes it helps to wiggle the blades a little bit. Okay. Make sure you just got some threads sticking up out of the holes and you're good to go. And next, we'll finish it off with the installation hardware. One washer and one nylon lock nut for every bolt. Okay, so now all the hardware is installed, it's time to snug it up and tighten everything down. So a couple notes here. The instructions call for a torque between 110 and 120 inch-pounds. We split the difference normally and just set our torque wrench to 115 inch-pounds. We like to use a small torque wrench, like this one is a quarter-inch drive. That works the best because if you use a bigger torque wrench, like a 3 8 or higher drive torque wrench, 115 inch-pounds is at the very bottom of the range that these torque wrenches will, uh, will measure. And they're typically, at least in the click type, not as accurate at the very bottom of the range. So we recommend using a smaller torque wrench if you can, and using a second wrench on the back side, just start to go around and snug up all of these bolts in a circle. Now in a, a two or a three blade hub, it doesn't matter what order you go in exactly. If you're using a four or five or a six blade hub, we recommend just going around and tightening them in pairs uh, in a crisscross pattern, kind of like you would for lug nuts on a, a wheel. Okay, so I haven't actually tightened anything yet. They're just sort of gently snugged. It's good to make sure, take a quick inspection at all the blade roots. Make sure everything is sitting snug. You don't have anything crooked or uh, any gaps or anything like that. This looks pretty good. And note, I normally do this on a padded surface or a carpet or something, just so I'm not digging the blades up or anything, but I'm doing it on the hard table here just so you can see it better. So, I'm now going to go around and actually tighten these, torque them to their final specs. I like to go around twice, so I get uh, one click going around all the, the bolts, and then go around and snug them up one more time to get to that final torque. Okay, that's one time all around. We'll go around one more time to check everything out. And that's it. Everything is snugged up and ready to go. Take one more close inspection. Make sure you can't wiggle the blades. Make sure everything is really snug. There are no gaps or anything. And if it feels solid, you're ready to go.
If you found this video useful, please leave us a like on the way out. It helps us out a ton. And we're going to start doing some more of these how-to videos with step-by-step -step instructions. So if you can think about anything else you'd like to see about propellers or pusher fans, mini airboats, anything like that, please leave a comment down below and we'll check it out. Thanks a lot and be safe.